So today might be a little bit of a shorter one, um, but we just wanted to kind of have a conversation around how to ask for reviews and testimonials. And there's a ton of different sites out there that you can request these um, and have people write them on. Um, and so Kathleen and I will have some suggestions as to how you can ask for these, what platforms to send people to, how to, um, you know, how to ask from basically, like where to send them, how to do all of that. Um, so I thought we would maybe start and kind of make this a little bit more of like a mastermind um, and see what people are using now, what your process looks like. Um, the other thing that a lot of people kind of debate um, is when do you ask for the review? Do you ask for it prior to closing or do you ask for it post closing? So I kind of wanted to start with that question and get some feedback from the group. So what are your guys' thoughts on, is it pre-closing or post-closing? When do you ask for the review? Does anyone have any thoughts on that? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> or do you do it at all? I think it's mostly been like after the fact, but then also that can be challenging because they move forward with, you know, moving into their house or, or whatever it is. And it's a distraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, um, feedback that I've gotten from agents is, you know, exactly that, which is why they have done it pre-closing. Um, and maybe it's, you know, once everything's, you know, it's just kind of pending, like your past inspection, your past appraisal, and you're just maybe a week or two prior or, um, um, before closing that you ask for that review. Um, anyone else have any thoughts? We started asking for it in our, like, we send out an email the week before closing. And then at the end of that email, kind of just put a little something in it to first mention it. And then if they still haven't done it, then mention it post. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. I think having multiple touch points and asking for that review, I think is a really good, um, good idea. You never know what's going on in their lives. If it's like kind of a hectic transaction, um, before closing and, you know, post-closing people are moving in. So having those kind of gentle reminders is always a really good idea. And again, it's just, I think over communicating and having multiple touch points, um, and including that is a great idea. Anyone else? All right. Okay, next question. Where do you send people for your review? I don't know. You don't know, Bethany? <laughs> I, I mean, I've sent them, I think I've sent them before to like realtor.com. Okay. Um, and then I know being on the team, they have, I don't know where they send, but they, they just do it. Mm -hmm. So okay. I think having a consistent procedure was, is going to be helpful. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always, um, I always throw out the question when you're looking for a contractor, where do you go? I go to Google. Yeah. Google. I feel like the primary places we've done it is Facebook and Google. Mm-hmm. And then if you want to, so say you find them on Google, if you want to read more about their company or you want to read more reviews about the company, where else would you go? I either go to their website or I go to their Facebook page. That's me personally. Mm -hmm. Do you trust the reviews on their website to be um, all-encompassing or cherry-picked? Cherry-picked, I would assume. So, so when when I always talk to you know agents about reviews, I'm like, you put yourself in the consumer seat just a little bit here and think through you as a customer how you go and source and look at reviews, right? Like, what are you doing? And I think the most, most people start with Google for everything. You wanna know restaurants near me, 
right? Where do I want to go to eat tonight? What's good? And then you scroll through all the restaurants and you're just looking at that rating number, right? You look at their name to kind of know what kind of food it is. And then you look at the rating and mm -hmm. I won't go eat somewhere that's less than like four stars. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the mindset I want you guys to have when you're making decisions about your business is to always put the customer shoes on and go, okay, if I was looking for a realtor, what would I want it? Where would I go? First, I might ask around. That's a referral, right? If nobody knows anybody, then where am I going to go? I'm going to Google and then I'm going to start reading about people. Where do I go to read about people? Well, their website and their Facebook page. That's where I go to source my information about people to see if there's somebody I even want to continue a conversation with. Do I want to reach out to them to get an estimate, right? Do I want to reach out to them to get a quote or, or nah, I don't really, not, not digging what's on their pages. In my yeah. opinion, if I'm looking for something and I see that they haven't posted on Facebook in like a year or six months, then I'm kind of like, I lose trust. I'm like, okay, are they really in business? Do they do a lot of business? Like, you know, that to me is like a bad indication of, okay, well, what are they doing? And, you know, there's going to be instances where I'm like, okay, well, maybe they're just like a really small like company and they like don't do it. Social media is not their thing. But like, it also, I think looks really good when I do go on to a Facebook page and I see their activity and the quality and the content of their post, And then I see that they have all of these great reviews. Um, I mean, it, it bodes well. So yeah, you just nailed it. It's the instant trust, right? You instantly have a little bit of trust and faith that that company is at least competent, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's, that's what you can rely on. It's like, okay, they have competency. They know what they do and they get really great feedback about it. Mm-hmm. So maybe yeah. I should have a conversation with them too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So going back to reviews, um, I would say it's probably best practice when you are asking for a review to only just include one or two options. Um, one of those options, it needs to be your, your Google business page. Um, Cause like, as we said, People are going on Google first. Um, and then I would say it's either your Facebook page or maybe it's Zillow or realtor.com. Like if you have one of those profiles set up and it's really robust and you have a ton of good reviews on, on those pages and you want to kind of keep that going, or maybe you get a lot of, like you do a lot of leads through um, Zillow or realtor.com, then you could choose one of those. Um, I think if you do more than three, then it's a little overwhelming to the consumer, to the client. Um, so really just kind of have one or two options. Um, and I think maybe having two options is good for them. Like if they don't want their name to show up on Google when they leave a review, um, cause that is a requirement, um, then it kind of gives them that option to maybe, oh, maybe I want to leave them a review, but I I don't want my name to show up on Google or, you know, so it might just be one of those things where someone doesn't want to necessarily like have their name displayed on there. Um, so who on here has a Google business page? I do. Yes, you do, Bethany. I know because you did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Caitlin, nice. Okay. So I'm going to start there and I'm just going to kind of really quick walk through where you can find it um, and how you can manage it. Um, it's a very simple process, like because everyone has um, a Gmail account and a Google account, um, it's very, you can find it within your Google apps. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and... So when you're in, okay, there's so many pop-ups with Zoom nowadays. Okay. So you can either Google, Google business, or you can also, when you are in your, um, like your Gmail account or something, like, so if I just go to my Gmail account, like you have the little Google apps section, if you click on that, 
you'll see business profile manager. And if you don't see that, usually you can scroll down and it's one of those apps. Um, and you can click on more from Google Workplace. Um, but you can click on that or you can just literally Google Google business and it's google.com backslash business. Um, and so what a Google business page does is if someone searches for your name or real estate, um, the idea is that your business shows up on the right hand side, very similar to what you see right here. Um, but then you're just going to click on manage and it's going to walk you through the steps of setting up that business page or that business account. And so you would first add your business name. So you would do something very similar to like your Facebook account, your Facebook business page. Um, you would do something like your name, obviously, um, and then real estate or realtor with Keller Williams, something like that. Um, so I'll do something really, I'm not going to finish setting this up because this is fake. <laughs> um, and then you would just continue and then, okay, so it obviously has some... So maybe I'm just going to do realtor or Keller Williams. Is that too long? Let's see. Okay. You're going to choose your business type. Um, so it's going to be service business. A category is going to be real estate. So as you can see, guys, if anyone has set up like a Facebook business page, it's really similar. It's going to ask you a lot of the, the same questions. And you can also um, enter in areas. So if you want to be more specific with the service areas, um, you can enter all of those in here. I think a lot of people that I've sat down with and done this, they've just done like counties to be really all encompassing. So you could do, you know, you could add all like the five county Metro Milwaukee area. And then of course, you're going to enter in your contact information um, and so on and so forth. So I don't want to actually create this because this is not an actual business. Um, but I do know once you have it set up, um, you're able to manage it and add in photos. Um, and add in a lot of other details pertaining to your business. And the great thing about it is that you're the one managing it. So you're managing it the way that you want people to see it when they're when you come up in a search. Um, and so once that page is created, then you're able to grab a link to send people to the review. Um, and so if I were to click, let's just see. I click back here, my business manager. Okay, because I don't have it set up. But just know that when you click on that Google business like manager, you're going to have a bunch of different options to edit your profile, edit your photos. Um, and then there's going to be like a get review. And that button you click, and then you can copy that link. So that's how you're going to send people to. So just to show this, I'm going to use Bethany as an example. Claire Williams. So here is Bethany's Google business page. So it's great. I can see she's already got three Google reviews. I can click to her website, directions to her office. I can call her. Um, but you can see she uploaded her headshot in here, um, the office address. So if I'm, I'm meeting her maybe for a buyer consultation, I can um, click to see the, the office. I've got, she's got a little bio in here, links to profiles, um, and then her Google reviews. So I can click on those reviews and I can take a look at those. And Bethany, I love that you responded to these two. I think that's a really great way to engage with people. And it also just shows other customers that you are responsive. Like you have that, that communication, not only with, you know, your clients, but like the people who are leaving you reviews, you're actually taking the time to say thank you and it, you're showing that. So I think that's a really great idea as well. So keep that in mind. So if you do get a review, 
respond to it as well. And hopefully I didn't, I didn't realize that would show up on there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And the, and uh, ch like, hopefully you're not getting any negative reviews, but you're hopefully you're just responding to those, those awesome reviews, those awesome five-star reviews that you're getting. Um, yeah. So the one thing with Google reviews is just keep in mind, um, it does make you verify the page. So I've seen it where it's literally just a text message that you receive to verify. In other cases, you've had to have a postcard sent to the office address, and then you type in that code on that postcard. So just keep that in mind if like your page isn't showing up, if it's saying that you have yet to verify it, that's why. Um, so once you verify it, and again, like there's been a couple instances that I've seen where it's literally a postcard that gets sent to the office um, with a code and then you verify it that way. Has anyone had to do that? And Bethany, I can't remember um, what year is required. Do you remember? Mine was a postcard. It was? Okay. Yeah. I feel like a lot of um, Tosa Asians, it was a postcard. And I wonder if it's because it was a newer location that Google had to verify. Kathleen, have you seen that? I, I think it was a postcard. It was a long time ago. I don't remember. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it used to be a postcard. I think they've updated it where like you have to enter in a whole bunch of extra information, maybe even like upload a license and then they'll send you a postcard. Like it, they really, I think, have cracked down on some of their security. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I just like to mention that because I know sometimes that can be a little bit of a hassle. So. Um, all right. So do most people just send an email to ask for reviews? Okay. So who uses templates in Gmail? I don't, but I need to start doing that. Okay. So um, within your Gmail account, you have the option to turn on templates. Um, so if you don't do this yet, highly recommend you do, because um, I'm sure a lot of you draft the same type of email to your clients, whether it's um, you know setting up a buyer consultation or a listing appointment, or it's, hey, here's um, everything that we, you know, here's everything that we need to check off the list, or here's everything that we've done. Um, so there's a way that you can do that within your Gmail account. So I'm going to share my screen again, and I'm gonna go into my Gmail account. And so what you're gonna do is click on this little gear icon for your settings. And okay, Oop, let me let me go back. Okay, gear and then see all settings. So then from here, you're gonna click on advanced and you have this template section. So within everyone's account, this is disabled automatically. You're gonna turn that on, you're gonna hit enable. So this is going to allow you to create pre-formatted templates when you're composing a new email. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit compose, or actually I already have one started here. So you're basically gonna draft your email as if you were gonna send it to your client. And you can title it whatever you'd like. Please write us a review, please leave a review. Thanks for working with us, um, whatever you wanna write, but you're gonna draft that email. Um, and I actually used chat GPT to write this specifically. Um, so if you need some ideas with generating like how to ask for a review, utilize chat GPT, Google Bard, whatever service like AI um, you want. Um, it's just a really great tool in some of these um, aspects of your business with like just generating some text. Um, so this is where I went and I just said, give me 500 characters uh, for asking a client for a review. And that's what I got. So, and then you can tweak that as needed. 
And I can also regenerate a different response just to get some different ideas. Um, so here we go. I've got kind of my text asking for that review. And then the next thing that I would do is I would include some different options. So you can do below our two sites to write me a review. Please feel free to write on just one or both. And so we could do Google and Facebook. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my link to my Google page. So let's use Bethany again. So, so if you're in your account, you're gonna have a unique link. It's gonna be way shorter than the one I'm gonna grab. So if I wanna write a review, maybe I'll just grab this link. Again, it's super long, but I'm gonna hyperlink it. So I'm gonna copy that link and I'm gonna highlight Google. And then down here where it says insert link, I'm gonna click that, paste that link in there and hit okay. And I would do the same thing for Facebook. So you'd find your Facebook business page Bethany, I'm gonna use you again. I'm gonna click on Facebook. And I'm gonna copy that link. Oh, pretend I'm logged in. Um, copy that link. Highlight the word Facebook. And again, you could literally write out like, click here to write me a review on Google. And like, you could hyperlink that entire sentence. Oop, not attachment. Didn't mean to press that one. I do that so many times where I click on attachment instead of hyperlink or vice versa. Okay, so insert link and again, paste that, hit okay. So now those two are both linked. And if you wanna like change the size of this and make it a little bit more prominent, you can do that as well with some of those options in the toolbar. But there you go. So there's my email, it's drafted. Those links are not gonna change. Those are both gonna go to my profile. And then at this point, what you're gonna do is these three dots where it says more options, you're gonna click that. Now I've got templates as an option. So if you had this, if you didn't have this enabled, this would not show up. So templates right here. So you can see I've got a ton of other templates that I've created before, um, but I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna hit save draft as template. And then again, I've got this other section here. I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna save it as a new template. And it's already gonna pull in my subject line. So I'm gonna say, okay, that looks good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it. And there we go. So if I discard this draft, and if I hit compose again, and if I click the three dots, go to templates, there's my most recent template at the very top. And if I click on that, there it is. So I don't have to rewrite that or think of something new, but I can also tweak it too. So if you've got, you know, maybe some different things that you wanna say per client, you can always tweak this. Another thing too, if you have an email signature, You'll notice it's in there twice. So for that template, I'm gonna remove all of that. I'm gonna re-save this because if you have it set up where your email signature is gonna pull into every email that you write, um, you wanna save the template without an email signature. So I'm gonna click those three dots again, hover over templates, um, save draft as template, and I'm gonna override please write us a review, click that. That's gonna say, this will override your save template. Yep, that's what I want, so save it. Perfect. So if I discard that, hit compose again. Now, if I pull in that template, I've just got my one email signature. Any questions on that? Does that make sense? Did I go through that too quickly? No, I might need just notes, some notes step-by-step. Step. 
really, if you have, um, if you have that enabled, just whenever, just think about, you know, writing that, that email as if you were sending it and then click the three dots, hover over templates. If you've never used templates before, you won't see as much as what you see here. You're going to save draft as template and then save as new template. All right, because that should save you a lot of time. And I would suggest, you know, making that part of your um, your checklist um, post or pre-closing is send out review email. And then you've got that template, compose, select it, boom, there we go. And maybe you have a pre-closing and a post-closing email um, and you have that review, you know, ask for review in there. So you can kind of, format this however um, however you'd like. All right. Kathleen, any thoughts? Anything that I kind of missed on that? Anything I... Um, I was just uh, saying in the chat that you can also um, create smart plans. So... Um, I would actually maybe challenge you to think about that because I, I know for me, if somebody sends me an email asking me to set out a testimonial and literally a contractor did like two weeks ago and I still haven't, and I know it's like in the back of my mind and yeah, I'll get to it eventually, but like maybe he should remind me to do it, right? So you can create a smart plan that maybe has several steps to it so that it's like send the first email you know, wait a week, send another email, wait a week, send a text or, or something like that. And I'm sure there's probably smart plans in the smart plan library. If you just type in the word review, um, I'm sure you'll find 5,000 of them that you can kind of rework with your own verbiage mm -hmm. um, for what works for you and your business. So I would maybe even think about doing a smart plan um, that way you can have a little bit of a follow-up system and it's not just like I sent that email once and they never responded. Well, yeah, I mean, you have to tell a person on the average nine times before um, they start to actually hear the information you're giving them. So you might have to ask for a review nine times before you get one, right? It might not always be um, as quick as you're feeling. So the other um the whole asking for a review before or after closing debate, I think it, it ends up being a combination of both. I think you really have to think about setting the standard with your clients um, before closing and really ideally at the appointment. I'm going to deliver five-star service to you. And in return, I ask for a five-star review, right? And, and set that expectation up front so that a couple of times during the um, the process, you can just you know stop and ask, hey, am I delivering that five-star service to you? And they're going to be like, oh my gosh, this experience has been great so far. You'd be like, great. I'm going to send those links, you know, before we get to the closing table. If you can take a few minutes and write some reviews for me, it would really go a long way in helping me with my business. Um, and then you can still post closing, still continue to follow up until it's actually done. Um, I know like most of you have probably bought a house before. Um, it's chaotic, right? Like, being at the closing table and then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I got the keys and anything anybody has said to you in the last week is gone, right? Like you're so focused on, okay, when do the movers come in? Where do we actually want to put away the kitchen stuff? Do I, do the drinks go here? Do the, the, the plates go there? Okay. So if I'm cooking, I need to grab my cutting boards. Where should those go? And yeah, yeah, I love my realtor. Of course I want to leave her a good review, but I, I just don't have time, right? Maybe they don't um, have Wi-Fi hooked up yet. They can't even like yeah. get on Wi-Fi when they're at yeah. home. It could take, it. yeah, it could take three weeks for Spectrum to get out or whatever, right? So, um, you know, I think it's okay to have a follow-up system behind you asking for reviews. And I really want you to think about maybe what does that follow-up system look like? Um, because honestly, guys, asking for, uh, for it once, I'm sure most of you do that. And then you get frustrated because you don't have any reviews yet, right? And you all have enough past clients that, you should have a review from everybody and on multiple sites. And it's okay to ask for that. Um, the other thing I want to challenge you with is 
really being intentional with getting these reviews. Um, and it can't just be something passive. It can't just be send the email after closing and be done with it. If you really want to grow your business, if you want to be the person who, when they Google you, you have 45 five-star reviews. Um, if you want to be that in your business, you have to be intentional about it. Right. And, um, so that's why I kind of challenge you with talking about reviews throughout the process, because that's the intentionality behind it that I want you to have. Otherwise you're going to end up with clients like me who are just honestly going to put it on the back burner. Like, yeah, you were great. And I just haven't gotten around to leaving that review yet. Then I probably will never, I might, I'm going to tell people about you and I'm going to re, you know, refer, I referred my next door neighbor to my contractor a few weeks ago. Right. Like that's great. But that review would also go really, really far as well. So um, intentionality, intentionality is, is really the name of the game with it. Yeah. And I think like to kind of piggyback off of what, what Kathleen said is, you know, we always talk about like follow-up, like post-closing follow-up too. Like maybe it's like you mention it at the closing, Hey, I'm going to be sending you like something to like an email. You're going to be receiving an email from me asking for a review. I would love if you took some time to, to write that. And then maybe it's two weeks or a month post-closing and what you do is you you call them anyway. Like maybe that's part of your process, but then you can also at that point, and hopefully that's a point where the dust is kind of settled for them, like moving. Um, but you can ask like, hey, just following up to see if you were able to write me that review. Um, I'm going to go ahead and resend that to you. Um, if you take it, can take a couple of minutes and, you know, make that part of like your, your follow-up as well. Like, Hey, did, did move, how did moving go? Do you need anything? Were you able to get set up with spectrum? Like, you know, um, so just kind of incorporating that, that follow-up I think is really important. And then the other thing that I always ask too, is, what about incentive incentives? Um, my photographer reached out and asked me to write her a review. And she then like in the email also said like, Hey, do you want a free or a, a $5 Starbucks gift card? Please write me a review. And I was like, heck yeah, I want a $5 Starbucks gift card. So I immediately wrote her a review and I thought that was such a good idea. <laughs> and maybe I just love coffee so much, but like that to me was like, heck yes, I will absolutely, like, I love her, like, and, but it was like that incentive to like, I want that Starbucks gift card. Um, so I don't know if anyone on here has done that. Um, but I just thought that was such a good idea. And so maybe like, especially if you have no reviews online yet, like maybe putting in a little bit of extra money, like to get those on there and to get people to do it. Does anyone do that? Does anyone have incentives? I considered doing it. Oh, sorry. No, you can go. You can go. <laughs> I was going to say, I've considered doing it as far as like clients who have been like they've closed maybe a year ago or longer and I'm still looking for a review of like, hey, like checking in, but also if you write me a review on Google and Facebook, like I'll give you, you know, whatever gift card it may be or something like that mm -hmm. that was kind of my question of like do you like would you give the incentive and in the first initial ask or would you give it on like if they're not responding per se for like a couple months then offering it like how like what yeah what's your thoughts on that I think it kind of depends on what you want to make as part of your process because you know I don't think you want to you know, if you have clients that like know each other and you're like, oh, I got this like gift card from my realtor and they're like, oh, well, I didn't get one. Like, you know, try and make it as consistent as possible. But, um, you know, maybe it's just the first round of clients that you offer that, or, you know, it's maybe something to kind of think through. Um, but I just thought it was a really good idea. Um, I don't know, Kathleen, what do you think? Yeah, um, I would just be a little cautious because um, as realtors, we have a little bit different rules and regulations as far as like gift giving than, um, you know, people in other trades. So you can't, um, you got to be really careful with tying an incentive into an action specifically to like work with you somehow. So 
I would just make it very clear, like, you know, on whatever email you send out, if you're going to give a gift or if you're doing like a Facebook post, like I would just put a quick sentence in there that says like, you know, leaving a review does not um, obligate you to work with me in the future. Like, I don't know how to say that in like a not negative way. Right. But like, you know, receiving an incentive um, is not an obligation to sell your house or something like that um, to make it very clear that like, you're not basically paying them to work with you. Um, you just kind of have to really think through some of those rules and regulations that we have as realtors when it comes to incentives. But I know that um, some people have done like a, a giveaway for something a little bit bigger, maybe like a Yeti cooler. Um, people love like Nest thermostats and ring doorbells, right? So they'll do like a giveaway and they'll say like each review that you leave us on these three sites counts as an entry. Right. So if you just leave one on Google, you just get one entry. If you do Google, Facebook and my website, then you'll get three entries. Um, and I'll, you know, this is the date and time of the drawing. All reviews have to be completed by this date and time, that type of thing. Um, the one thing I would caution you with on that is I've heard like Google not necessarily posting all reviews that are turned into a face on a Google page. So um, I would ask for maybe like a screenshot as they're submitting or some sort of like proof that they did, or you can just blindly go on their trust that they did do it, even if Google doesn't show it um, and just enter them in anyways, because honestly, who cares, right? Like they're, they're trying to get, leave you a review. So, um, so you can do something like that. I know, like maybe think about if I'm going to spend $5 on Starbucks cards for 10 people, why wouldn't I just go buy a bigger gift at 50 bucks or a hundred bucks and make it like a competition because people like winning things as well. So, um, Rachel, I don't know why Google isn't posting all reviews. It seems to be something newer in the last probably six months. Um, I can't tell you why though. Sorry. Yeah. And guys, I know, um, we have not, we're not going over the website for reviews. Um, purposely because websites are being released next month. So if you do want to get, if you are using like the command agent site um, and you're utilizing it to get reviews, um, we will be going through training all on the new sites next month. So that's um, coming down the pike very soon. Um, but yes, I mean, between Google, your website and Facebook, or one other one, which other one you you use, um, those are kind of like the main three. And in I think across the board, what seems to be um, the most viewable, um, Google, because you know it's Google, and also the more Google products you use, the higher ranking you'll get with the SEO search, like the search engine optimization, um, and that's all that organic SEO. So the more Google products you use, the more Google likes that, and the more they push you up in that search. So keep that in mind too when you're drafting or uh, creating your Google business page. Any other questions or comments, you guys? All right. Well, hopefully this was more kind of clarity into um, some different ways that you can, you know, incorporate asking for a review um, during the transaction and just a little bit more background on some of the, um, the sites that you can send people to. Follow up is the name of the game with this one, guys. Don't let them off your, your sites until they leave you that review. Exactly. All right, everyone. Have a great Thursday. Uh, and Have a great Labor Day weekend. Hope you guys get out and enjoy the last little bit of summer. All right. Yeah. Hot weather, I hear. It's coming. <laughs> Exciting. Love it. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.